All right, so by now, hopefully you're done with your data collection. Even if you're not, we're gonna pretend that you are. And you've collected, in your case, five properties. But in real life, you'll have collected a lot more than five properties. It might be dozens, it might be hundreds, it might even be thousands. So then the question is, how do you share that information with other people? Because fundamentally, people are not gonna look through giant long databases uh, for fun. At least, you know, regular people won't. So in order to interpret the data, in order to create a report that makes sense, you need to analyze the data. And in our case, in this class, we are going to use SPSS in order to do this. SPSS stands for Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. Uh, and it is, I would argue, the most common statistical software out there. Um, there are others, in fact, there's a lot of others. Uh, Stata is a pretty major one. SAS is another pretty major one. The one that's really up and coming and becoming more and more popular is called R. Unfortunately, R is entirely programming based and I can't assume that you guys know how to program. Uh, so instead we're using SPSS, which is still, I would argue, again, the major standard um, in pretty much all the social sciences and that definitely includes urban planning. So if you do go into urban planning, this is what you're gonna use. If you're gonna be an archeologist, more than likely, this is what you're gonna use. This is the, the piece of software that we, that we tend to use. So you may wonder, well, why not Excel? Well, I mean, you could use Excel. Uh, Excel is um, the Swiss Army knife of all uh, spreadsheet software. You can do just about everything with Excel. Um, but Excel is really spreadsheet software. It's not a database software. So while it can do this, uh, it would take a lot more steps and there's a lot more possibilities for error in Excel. Whereas if you use SPSS, uh, you're more likely to be able to do this faster, more efficiently, and not have to deal with the particularities of Excel. In particular, uh, the fact that Excel, if you reorder data in Excel, because each cell is individual, unless you specifically lock it down, you can really, really mess up your data. Uh, furthermore, SPSS has built-in metadata, data about data, which I'm about to talk to in a bit. Uh, and it's the one you're most likely to see in various offices around the country. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to do SPSS and, um, that doesn't mean you're not going to use Excel. You're going to, you are going to use Excel, but you're going to do SPSS for the analysis and then Excel for, um, making it look pretty because SPSS that does not make things look pretty. So this is the interface in SPSS and you'll immediately notice that there's two separate windows here. There's a data view and a variable view. And this is what I meant by metadata. So when uh, you uh, import data into SPSS, which I've already all done for you, you don't need to do this yourselves, um, you can uh, uh, organize your data uh, in the very, in, I'm sorry, in the data view. Uh, so you can see how many entries you have, how many, you know, by which address or street number or style or whatever. But you can also go into variable view and um, make alterations there. So for instance, uh, you can put in labels. So if the data was entered one, two, three, four for condition, for instance, um, you can say that one means excellent, two means good, three means fair, four means poor. You can also say, hey, if there's a missing data here, then it's it's 99, right? That it's it's missing. And so SPSS will be smart and figure out, hey, this is missing data and um, know that in its analysis. So it's really, it's really pretty great. This tool is extraordinarily powerful. Um, usually I would encourage you to do all sorts of data manipulation, but um, I'm trying to keep things more simple this year. But suffice it to say that this is the kind of tool that allows you to really double and triple check your data to make changes where need be, to um, uh, recalculate data into other um, fields, which I've already done for you. So uh, you have collected uh, dates uh, that are specific by date, um, but I've also uh, uh, changed it into decade. So you can still look at, look at it by specific date, but you can also look at it by decade. And I'll show you why that's useful later. Um, so 
all of these data uh, are now ready to be analyzed and we're just doing very, very simple analysis uh, in this um, uh, assignment. We're doing uh, frequencies and cross tabs and I'll talk about more, uh, I'll talk about those more uh, specifically in the um, tutorial which will be coming up in the next video. But in this video, we're just going over the general, the general stuff. So in your analysis section, in your report, what you're going to need to um, analyze is, well, basically what is in Normandy Village now, right? So you're going to build a history. We've already talked about that uh, through your archival research. But from your field research, what we really want to find out is what does Normandy Village look like now? Uh, so to do that, you're going to discuss certain uh, aspects of the neighborhood and they should be more or less in this order, right? First, how many properties are there in Normandy Village? Uh, and uh, the exact number is 268. Um, when were they built? Uh, what was their historic use? What is their current use? What are their styles? Are there other details that are relevant? Things like outbuildings, additions, uh, whatever. Uh, what is the overall condition of the buildings in uh, the district? And finally, recommendations for National Register listing. Uh, this last one will go in the recommendations chapter of your CRS report, not in the analysis chapter. Okay, but the rest of this stuff will be the meat of your analysis chapter. So here in the corner, you see actual output from SPSS. And this is showing you the historic use of um, buildings in Normandy Village. And you'll notice a few things here. Um, what SPSS immediately does is give you lots and lots of um, analysis, including frequency percent, valid percent, and cumulative percent. And I just want to caution you here. Um, frequency means exactly how many are there. So that one's pretty straightforward. Um, but if you're going to go with percent in your analysis, you're going to want to use the valid percent. Again, you're going to want to use the valid percent. Um, you'll notice that in this particular um, chart, the valid percent and the percent are actually the same. But in some cases, they're different. And uh, the valid percent makes sure to take out any kind of missing data. So if there's uh, any missing data, for instance, um, what is the use of outbuildings? Uh, if you use percent, it'll keep using uh, properties that don't have outbuildings because they won't know the difference. So you need to make sure to use valid percent if you're using percentages. Sometimes it makes sense to use frequency, sometimes it makes sense to use valid percent. Now what you're actually going to build in your uh, CRS report is, uh, well, at least three charts um, and at least three maps. And I'm going to care about uh, if they're relevant to your analysis, how clear they are, and also how nice they look. So here you can see a map showing the condition of buildings uh, from another class, um, from the, uh, this is the um, upper uh, Princess Anne Street uh, corridor. And you, you see that actually they used uh, the low-tech method of doing this, which is uh, using the Fred GIS map and then playing with it in Photoshop, which is what you're, uh, most of you are going to do. So I'll show you how to do that when we talk about maps uh, next week. Um, but for some things you're going to do charts, for other things you're going to do maps. To be clear, you must have charts and maps. They must be illustrations, not tables. Lots of people do not know how to read a table. So this table right here, lots and lots of people don't know how to read this properly. So you have to do charts and maps. Uh, and so I want to go over a few rules about that. As I mentioned, I'll talk about um, maps more in detail. Uh, in a later class, but right now I want to talk about charts. First rule of charts, never, ever, ever, ever use 3D charts. 3D charts are terrible. They are impossible to read. Uh, never use them. Don't. Just don't use them. Another rule, uh, by and large, don't use pie charts. Uh, first of all, they're hard to read. Uh, you'll notice that the one on the uh, left is even worse because it's also kind of pixelated. These are from CRS reports, by the way. Uh, but even if it's pretty decent, like the one on the right, like there's nothing wrong with it, I guess. The colors are pretty good, right? Excellent is in green, poor is in red, which is what you want because it's a value statement. But like, why? Why would you show it like this? Because if you show it like this, the reader doesn't know how many 
are good. I mean, from this, I would assume it's somewhere around 80%, but like it could be 90%. I can't, I can't tell. Um, so don't use pie charts. Uh, use bar charts maybe. In this case, if you're just looking at four numbers, maybe don't use a chart at all. Uh, just tell me 95% of properties are in good shape uh, instead of um, using a pie chart. Or uh, in some cases, as you can see here, the map is actually useful because it's showing you that uh, one area is clearly different than the rest. One area has a lot more buildings in uh, fair and poor condition than everywhere else. Right? Again, with a pie chart, you can't see any of that. So don't, don't use pie charts. Or at least think very hard before using a pie chart. You also need to make sure to um, select your chart type carefully. So in this case, this is uh, the building year and uh, this chart has all sorts of issues. Uh, one issue is that uh, in decades where there was nothing built at all, uh, the chart is skipping over uh, those years. So let's see. Uh, yeah, so everything between 1830 and 1900 has nothing, which is, you know, confusing. Um, but furthermore, uh, these buildings, uh, the, the years were more of a continuum. Uh, so I would actually use a line chart here, not a bar chart. So to give you an example, uh, I think this is better. Um, in this case, it's looking at styles in different uh, time periods. I think that's a really uh, good analysis. Uh, but again here, um, you know, it's, it's better, but um, the colors are not great because it makes it a little bit hard to figure out which is which. So I would use um, a better contrast of color um, in order to, um, to see the, the, uh, when, when buildings were built a little bit, a little bit clearer. Um, in general, you want to choose your maps and char charts wisely. Don't duplicate. So don't have a map and a chart of the same thing. You're not showing anything new, so there's no point. It's a waste of my time and a waste of your time. Uh, so don't do that. And you want to make sure that they're organized in a logical manner. So for instance, don't first put in condition and then put in when the buildings were built. That doesn't make any sense. Make sure that... Um, the, uh, the charts that you build and the uh, maps that you build uh, proceed in a way that, that creates a story that makes sense. And so by and large, you're gonna wanna start with building date and kind of uh, end with um, recommendations uh, and have a, a, a continuum to get there, okay? Um, after this, I'm going to uh, make you a tutorial to show you how to actually make these charts but the big thing you're gonna have to do is explore. Try to figure out how can I describe this neighborhood? How can I describe the characteristics of this neighborhood? And some of that is going to be quantitative. Some of it is going to be qualitative. This is why you should also look at the website and um, find the sites that have, let's say, carports, because those are not going to be shown uh, separately. You're just gonna have to go through manually if you wanna see that and figure out which ones have carports, you should be able to tell from the picture at least. Um, maybe there's something interesting to say about that. Maybe there isn't. Um, but you are going to want to explore uh, these uh, entries to try to figure out what is interesting to say. What I'm um, really trying to get at here is that uh, your decisions as to what you want to emphasize and what you are going to ignore that is an important part of this assignment, right? Is to figure out how do you characterize a neighborhood? Uh, again, if in doubt, don't hesitate to ask me. I'm happy to help. Um, but do explore these entries and see what you find. All right, next, the tutorial.